The CD3 Sports cameras have come to Chatham High School for today's Section 2 Group 4 State Championship game between the Livingston Lancers and the Randolph Rams. And hello everyone and welcome to Morris County and Chatham High School. I'm Paul Spahala. Today the Section 2 Group 4 Championship is on the line between these two Iron Division foes, Livingston and Randolph. This will be the third time that these two teams have met this season. Livingston has twice already come away with victories over Randolph. Working with me on the sidelines today, Bill Bromberg. So Bill, on one hand, this is the third meeting where Livingston holds the edge. But on the other hand, it's also the third meeting, in a sense, in the sectionals with Randolph having the edge. Why don't you explain? Well, two years ago, Livingston missed qualifying for the state champ tournament by one game. The team that kept them out on cutoff day, Randolph. Last year, both teams qualified for the state tournament. They meet early in the uh, round. Who knocks Livingston out of the tournament? Randolph. So something's got to give today. Livingston got a little revenge by winning the conference championship. Now Livingston wants a little more revenge by knocking Randolph out of the state. This is a very hot Livingston team. They've won 20 of their past 23, and currently they're on a pretty good win streak also. They've won six straight, Paul, and of the five losses Livingston has had this year, four of those five are by one run. They are streaking at just the right time, and this team can score runs, and Paul, they can score runs in bunches. Yeah, they've got some impressive offensive stats that we'll take a look at throughout the day, but one of the most impressive right at the top of the order, Brian Meyerhofer. And Brian's having just a fabulous year. Paul, he leads off. He has scored 43 runs. That's unheard of. He's stolen 19 bases. He's carrying a batting average of just about 500. You talk about your leadoff man getting things started. Well, Meyerhofer is the classic example. These Randolph Rams are also a good hitting team. They're going to put up some high numbers. One of the fellows who does a lot of that offensively, but interestingly enough, if Meyerhofer gets on, of course, a threat to go. The man who's got to throw him down is Matt Artizone, the catcher. Let's talk about Matt. <laughs> Matt's lucky number is seven. Seven doubles. Seven triples, and yes, seven home runs and carrying a batting average of over 500. He's only a junior, and as Paul said, he is the catcher. Strong arm defensively. It's a classic matchup between the two. It should be a great game today. All right, the standard question. You don't like to play the same team three times in one season, especially if you've won the first two. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the story? Is it Livingston's disadvantage or the Randolph disadvantage? Well, normally you'd say it's very, very difficult to beat a team three times in one season. It's, in fact, you'd say right away Randolph has the edge. But the one difference today is the veteran Livingston team. Eight of their nine starters are seniors, while Randolph, as we'll mention later on, starts a lot of younger players, and the younger players have to respond to the pressure today as well, so it will be interesting. So it's the third meeting between these two who come out on top. Whoever does, they'll be the sectional champs. We'll be right back. Back, everyone. The third time will it be the charm for Livingston or Randolph. We will find out in just a moment as the Livingston Lancers take the field. They have been designated as the home team for today's Section 2 Group 4 Championship. I'm Paul Spahala. With me, Bill Bromberg. And right now, let's meet the starting batting order for the Randolph Rams. Dave Esposito will lead it off. He is the center fielder for Randolph. He'll be followed by the junior catcher, Matt Artizone. Hitting in the three spot is first baseman, Mark McLean. And in the cleanup spot is number 37, John Rupert. Rich Worst, a sophomore second baseman, hits fifth. He's followed in the order by a fellow sophomore, Mike McCambly, a third baseman. Joe Bobbles is the left fielder. He'll hit in the seventh spot. Frank Sallow will DH today. He'll be in the eighth position. And batting ninth, Justin Mezzacapo, a junior shortstop. Defensively for the Livingston Lancers, that is Billy Conway down at first base. Young man we met in the open standing on second base is Brian Meyerhofer. And around at short is David Malucci. Malucci at short. The only junior starter for the Lancers is at third base, and that is Tommy Orem. Out in left field for the Lancers. There he is wearing number eight, Jerry Salerno. Out in center field is number seven, Jason Halper. And around in right field is number 25, Keith Caggiano. And the battery today for the Lancers. Behind the plate is number 31, Zach Edelman. And the man who's going to be called on to stop the Randolph batting order today is Eric Rothfeld. Rothfeld on the season is 3-0, and oh, excuse me, 4-3, and three, with an ERA of 3.59. Four wins, three losses, 3.59 ERA. He has saved two games. In 52 and two-thirds innings, he has allowed 63 hits. He has struck out 32. 
and walked 31. So not a, a dominant pitcher either way, Bill, in that strikeout walk category. No, he'll, he'll rely on his defense today. It's a wide open field at Chatham. No fences. It's all you can get. So Esposito will lead it off for the Rams. Down at the third base coaching position is the head coach for the Rams, Pete Litachevsky. Pete in his fourth season as the head coach of the Rams. And there will be a, a slight, well, I guess there won't be a delay. There is a, a big soccer tournament. We are watching this game on the opening Memorial Day weekend. There's a big soccer tournament that takes place here in Chatham over the weekend. And some of the goals are up. Some of the players are practicing in the left field area. First pitch is no good from Rothfeld. It's ball one. Esposito, a senior center fielder, one of only two starting seniors for the Rams. Ball two. And in the background, you can hear that Randolph bench. They are up for the start of this ball game. Third time they are meeting the Lancers this year, and they are 0-2. And Rothfeld has now missed on three in a row. Hector Martinez is our home plate umpire. Pat Tillier and Ralph Rotundo are the base umpires. Here's the 3 0. <laughs> we were told that Hector Martinez will give an emphatic strike call, and you heard it there on that 3 0 pitch. Now 3 and 1. However, you won't hear the call on that one. It is ball four, and Esposito draws a walk. And he is certainly a threat to go. 17 stolen bases. Now, he has a team-high 22 runs scored. And, Bill, just by comparison, we talked about Meyerhofer with 43 for the Lancers. Yeah, just about double. But here's a big threat for the Rams. Matt Artizone, a junior catcher. Paulie, I've mentioned that Livingston won both previous games. They were 12-11 and 11-4. So two high-scoring affairs. Artizone will take a ball. However, for the Randolph side of the ledger, that 12-10 game, they were down at one point 12-1. So Artizone takes ball one. Artizone, as we mentioned in the open, hitting a cool 5-20. Seven doubles, triples, and homers. The Livingston, the, excuse me, the Randolph home field has a fence in left field, but then it's wide open in center and right field. And Pete Litachevsky says many of our extra base hits go to that center and right field area or we're hit on the road. So he says we'll have to leg out a lot of balls, and he feels that the Rams are a fast team. Popped up in the infield. Big break for the Lancers. Rothfeld makes the call, and he puts it away. We often have this discussion, Bill, about pitchers making their own plays, but we all have agreed that pitchers generally are great athletes, mm -hmm. and in Rothfeld's case, he's generally the left fielder. Especially on the high school level. He's probably your best athlete. Routine pop up to the mound. So with one away, Mark McLean is the batter, and that was a big out for the Lancers to get Artizone. But it doesn't get very much easier with McLean. Six doubles, seven triples, three homers. So we a big drop there from 21 extra base hits <laughs> down to 16. <laughs> this is a strong hitting Randolph team. Actually, both teams are. There goes Esposito. Check swing. It's called a strike. Throw to second, not in time. So a stolen base for Esposito, but a strike one count on McLean. I don't know if it was planned or not, but McLean checking his swing sets off the timing of catcher Edelman. So Esposito in scoring position. Fake to second. Meyerhofer, the second baseman, bluffed his way in, but then backed off. Mark McLean, the batter. He's hitting 5-10 this season. 0-2. Rothfeld, the 
second biggest worker on the Livingston staff at 52 and two-thirds innings. Jerry Salerno has pitched a little over 56 innings, 56 and a third. Play on at second, again a fake. Now the play is on. Safe. Esposito just got in under the tag of Meyerhofer. And that was awfully close. Mm -hmm. Count still 0 and 2 to McLean. Meyerhofer again in on the base. Making Esposito work out there. It's a, a somewhat humid day. A little bit overcast right now. The sun has been mostly out today, although cloud cover in the latter part of this afternoon on a Friday. Start of the Memorial Day weekend here in New Jersey. Rothfield is not really concerned about Esposito. He's not stealing third with the number three batter up in the first inning and only one out. This is for later in the game, really, to let him know that uh, he knows runners here at second. He's got a good pickoff move to second. The one-two. Curveball got him swinging. So, but now Esposito is more of a threat to try to steal third with two outs and a cleanup hitter up, only because he can score on so many other aspects other than a base hit. And that cleanup hitter is John Rupert. Rupert, a junior right fielder. Rupert hitting 395. And again, some impressive numbers we'll hear for both teams today. And again, the fake to second. Meyerhofer, the second baseman, keeps covering. At some point, you kind of wonder if shortstop Malucci won't sneak in. Rupert, the number four hitter in this Randolph order. We're in the top half of inning number one, playing for the Section 2 Group 4 Championship. Livingston on the field, Randolph at the bat. One and one. Was that a strike? Is that Dutch Rennert behind the plate? Famous National League umpire who also had a habit of extending that strike call. Had? <laughs> is he still active? I'm not sure. I can't remember seeing him this season now that I think of it. In the dirt, nice pickup by Edelman. Close backstop here at uh, Chatham High School. Only about 15 feet between the catcher and the cage. There you see you look at it, but certainly room to uh, advance a base. And Esposito, with his speed, would probably easily take the base. And here we'll get a chance to see. Esposito's going to be on the move, and he'll stand up. Edelman had a little trouble finding the carom off the screen. So it is a wild pitch that gets Esposito to third base. How prophetic. Enough room to move up on a wild pitch, and that's exactly what happened. Here's a look at it on the replay, and this one just gets completely away from Rothfeld. Yeah, the ball's rising and continues to rise. It was fast, but not quite that fast. And easily going into third is Esposito, where he can score on an infield hit or an error. Two balls, one strike count. Two and two to John Rupert, top half of inning number one. Wellfield has been high where he's been throwing consistently. How I'm sorry, it was a 3-2 count. It was a full count, so it's ball four to Rupert. All right, we're going to make you the coach. We're going to try to steal with first and third and two out. See, first and third, number five, hit her up. I don't think so, and I I'll tell you why. Um, I agree. Again, the, the team is just hitting so well. I'd like to give the batter a chance to make something happen here. I agree. And with two outs, of course, if he goes, Edelman behind the plate will be probably gunning him down, should, trying to get the should, third out. Should throw through. Well, the batter is Rich Worst, sophomore second baseman, one of Three sophomores we're going to see from this point on in the order. Here we've got a play on as the runner walked off of first. 
Rothfeld walking back. Now the throw to the plate is high, and the run is in. And now the runner is headed for third base, and he'll slide in. So we had a delayed steal situation where Rupert walked off the base, and he drew Rothfeld into a throw at home. Tell you, everything was done perfectly, and a good throw by Rothfeld had him dead rights at the plate. This was deliberately done, as, as Paul mentioned. Now to throw the plate, Rothfeld takes his time. He's got him. I mean, there's no question he's got him, but the ball just takes off. You can see it's a good throw had him. He was out. So it's an error. It's a credit for a steal of home for Esposito, incidentally, and an error which allows the runners to the other runner to move up all the way to third. So a run is in without a hit for the Rams. So Pete Litashevsky, the head coach of the Rams, making things happen a little bit early. Well, I guess we were part right. We said we wouldn't steal off the pitcher. <laughs> Grounded to the mound. Rothfeld, though, it's off his foot. Good call quickly by Hector Martinez. As it hit off the foot of Rich Worst. Well, see, there's a classic example of a really the bad thing going right. Of course, a good throw or any kind of decent throw at him. So it wasn't going to work, it looked like, for Randolph. But uh, the high throw makes a run. And at some point, Esposito, the run on third, has to make a yeah, decision. Yeah, he has to commit, right. So an interesting way for the first run to score for Randolph. One run, no hits, and there is one Livingston error. Two and one the count to Rich Worst. Two two. Mike McCambly waiting on deck for the Rams. Neutral site for sectional championships in New Jersey. That's why we're here at Chatham High School, a group two school. The side of this Group 4 championship. Curveball. Got him going. We're going to have to have, have a throw to first. And the throw is wild. A second run will score. And Worst is going to end up at second base. Two runs in the inning. No hits for the Rams. That goes down as a strikeout, but then an E2. Wow. Livingston self-destructing here in the first inning. And again, Edelman had plenty of time. Throw again. Sales high. Conway at first leaped as high as he could, but it winds up in right field. Here's the curveball. It's a beautiful curveball. Swung on a miss. And now, watch catcher Edelman. He takes the mask off, the right thing to do. Steps into foul territory, so he's got the angle, and just throws it away. You know, if we could hold that replay, did he catch that on the fly? I think he scooped it, Paul. We get a quick look at it one more time after this pitch. Mike McCamley is the batter. Step off the mound. It, it, it was awful close, yeah. and with the dirt... You assume, and since the catcher right away, Edelman made the throw. But well, on the replay, it looked awful close. Pick off at second. Got him. So Roth fell to Meyerhofer, and they pick worst off of second base. And what an unusual inning this one was. We had two Randolph runs, no hits. There were two Livingston errors, and as it turns out, no one left on base for the Rams. Let's take this opportunity to meet the batting order for the Livingston Lancers. Livingston comes into this game at 22 and 5. They are the number three seed in this section. The Randolph Rams were the top seed. Brian Meyerhofer will lead it off for the Lancers. He is the second baseman. He'll be followed by center fielder Jason Halper. Right fielder Keith Caggiano hits in the three spot. And pitcher Eric Rothfeld is the cleanup batter. David Malucci, the shortstop, hits fifth. Batting sixth is first baseman Billy Conway. Batting seventh is Jerry Salerno, the left fielder. The catcher, Zach Edelman, hits eighth. And rounding out the order is Tommy Orem, Orem the third baseman. Defensively for Randolph, Mark McLean is over at first base. The sophomore, Rich Worst, is at second. The shortstop is Justin Mezzacapo, Mezzacapo number 42. And Mike McCambly, number 40, is the third baseman for Randolph High School. Joe Baubles is the junior left fielder. Out in center field is Dave Esposito. And around in right field is the junior John Rupert, Rupert number 37. Behind the plate for Randolph, Matt Artizone. Artizone is catching, and the pitcher is Keith Saradsky. Saradsky, a junior this season, is 5-0 with an ERA of 3.00. Keith Saradsky 
the pitcher today for the Randolph Rams. He'll face Meyerhofer, Halper, and Caggiano. We'll see some interesting numbers on the Randall. And oh. Paul, the second baseman on the throw down just Rich got Worst hit. just got clocked. We saw it on from our center field camera, and he is down and out. On the throw from Artizone, it hit a good 10 feet in front of the bag. It just came up, and it caught Rich Worst right in the face. And he is down and out. He has not moved since it hit him. This is starting off as a very strange strange game he's rolling over so he's conscious don't know where the ball hit him but just a an unusual throw down from the catcher is all it was the ball it was short hitting the, where the grass and the dirt met and just skipped up and right in the face it just popped up there was no chance that worst had for that one and it caught him right in the face So now the question is, will Rich Worst be able to continue? Uh, that's well, the medical bag is going to come out for the Rams. We're going to take a short break right now. We'll be back with more sectional baseball action right after this short break. Randolph 2, Livingston nothing. Back to Chatham High School. There's the good news. Number seven, Rich Worst, is up and walking off the field. So, Bill, apparently Worst is going to come out of the ball game. And, again, we're not quite sure where he took that hit. Somewhere in the face, whether nose, eye, we don't know yet. We'll try and find out. But apparently Worst is going to be taken out of the ball game. So the Rams will make a substitution. Worst, of course, is eligible to return to the game. And we're both keeping an eye on him. And we can't see any indication, Bill. I can't make out any kind of bruise or, no. or blood. If he's lucky... Look, he, he's pointing to the bottom of his neck. Yeah, if he's lucky, he took it uh, maybe on a meaty part. There's no cut. It, it's possible he got it right in the Adam's apple. Yeah, that's at, which very is, painful. Which is very painful and also could be quite... Uh, so now, the wor now they're washing away blood from his lip. So it looked like, it, it looked like he got caught in the bottom part of the lip. Mm-hmm. Again, that is Rich Worst, the sophomore second baseman for the Randolph Rams. And uh, I may have been premature in saying that he's out of the ball game. It could be that they're just working on him at the bench. And it could be he'll be back in the ball game. Anyway, let's go back to the second Randolph run on the strikeout. I Does think the, the catcher get the ball in the air? I think it's trapped. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was close. It was awful close, but the catcher... Edelman did trap it, and there, unfortunately for Livingston, his wild throw into right field, that allowed the second run to score for Randolph in the top half of inning number one. And, Bill, I think we're going to get worse back in the ball game. As you see, Randolph mm -hmm. does have a trainer with them. So he is looking at the lower lip, and apparently he's not even going to bandage ball. it up, and Rich Worst is back in the ball game. And the call we get from inside our truck is that the baseball did hit him in the lower lip on that bad bounce. But Worst will stay in the ball game. So an unusual start to this ball game. We've had two runs with no hits, and we've almost lost a player. Yeah. So Meyerhofer, Halper, and Caggiano, one, two, and three for the Lancers. And Hector Martinez is going to give Keith Saradsky, the junior pitcher for Randolph, a few more warm-up tosses. Just to recap, the top half of the inning, Esposito walked, stole second. There was a pop-out and a strikeout, and Livingston looked like they might get out of the inning. Then Rupert walked to put runners on first and third, and then Rupert, in a delayed steal, forced a throwing error by Rothfeld, which played it one run. Rupert, on the error, made it all the way to third, and then on the strikeout that we just showed you, Rupert was able to score the second Randolph run. One and one the count to Brian Meyerhofer. Keith Saratsky delivers, fly ball hit to left. Joe Bobbles puts it away.
So Meyerhofer flies to left, one up, one down. And up to the plate will step switch hitter Jason Halper. Halper will bat lefty against the right-handed throwing Saradsky. And that is Halper's better side of the plate. He's hitting 391 this season, but he's a 424 hitter as a lefty. And he goes for the bunt. Saratsky has trouble with the ball, and Halper will be on. As the ball is thrown away, it's into right field, and Halper will advance to second base. What is going on here? This is a double error against Saratsky, the pitcher. First error, he drops the ground ball back to the mound. Then he started to throw, and I think he stopped. He didn't want to throw and winds up having it slip out of his hand and rolling into right field. Well, so here's the look errors. at it. Here's the first error. The bunt's a decent one. Saratsky gets it. Right there's the first error. Now watch. He tries to stop. Oops. The and ball winds right up. The ground. Throws it in the right field. Two errors. So Keith Caggiano, the right fielder, steps up. Swing and a miss. This is a state tournament championship game, but neither team playing like it right now. A little nervous, perhaps. A little nervous, maybe a little too familiar with their opponent. Yeah. Curve misses high. So again, a double error charged to the pitcher, Saratsky. The first to allow Halper to reach first, and then the second got him to second base. So we've had four outs in the game and four errors in the game. Jeez. And no hits. And no hits and two runs. <laughs> And one busted lip. Caggiano, an impressive season. He's got 38 RBI. That's team high for the Lancers. He's headed to Yale next year. Part of the all Livingston Ivy League outfield, which we'll talk about. Yeah, Halper who plays center. He's going to Columbia, as is Rothfeld, who, as we mentioned, pitching today, but usually plays the outfield. Skied short outfield. Worst going back. He drops the ball, and all hands are safe. Halper naturally has to hold second base, but Worst just dropped the ball. And that is the third Randolph error here in the bottom half of inning number one. Just a simple, really, case of worse taking his eye off it before he caught it. Look where the runner is. Let's watch his head. Oops, I'm looking down, but the ball's not in my glove. And worse would be biting his lip if he was able to, but it's <laughs> too, too much pain to do that. So, all hands are safe. Runners at first and second for opposing pitcher Eric Rothfeld. And the runners are moving in the dirt. Throw will be to second. It oh. goes into center field. The fourth error. It's a 2-1 ball game. The runner going to third base. The play is on. And he's out. It goes 8-5, throwing out Caggiano. But Livingston is back in the ball game, scoring their first run on the throwing error against the catcher. So it's a stolen base for Halper and Caggiano. <laughs> Throw goes in the center. This is a good idea going for the back runner because he was only loping down to second, but the throw goes in the center field. Oh, my. Rothfeld fouls it into the screen, and, of course, the reason to go for the back runner is obvious because that man cannot go until he's positive the lead runner goes. Right. So there's always going to be some hesitation on the part of the trail runner. So, anyway, one run is in for the Lancers. There are two away as Caggiano was thrown out going from second to third. Again, credit Caggiano and Halper with stolen bases, but charge an error to Artizone. He realized we have a double no-hitter going? <laughs> and we've got three on, three on the board already. <laughs> They're just testing out our scoring ability. <laughs> Ball four. So Saratsky walks... His first man. Four Randolph errors in the bottom of the first. Livingston committed two in the top of the first. Man. Four errors and only one run. That's amazing so far. So far. By the way, the Chatham emergency squad has just showed up. 
Must be unusual for them to show up. So where's the injured party? Oh, he's out playing. Yeah. Well, he'll be in in a minute. Dave Malucci is the batter. Malucci, the shortstop for the Lancers. And we'll keep an eye on Rothfeld. Grounded towards short. Mezzacapo tosses to worst and just in time. And then worst throws it to the umpire and hits the umpire in the side <laughs> of the head. Let's just go to a break. This one's been a wild first inning. 2-1 our score. Randolph leads. Everyone in the chat, I, I apologize to our production crew for that, that quick outro, but I figured the odds were if, if I didn't go to a break quickly, somebody else was going to get hurt, and I was now, worried it might be me. There's your line that's score. One, that's a line score you don't see every day. 204-102. Sounds like area codes. So that's why I figured if somebody else is going to get hurt or maybe get in a car accident or something, I mean, something was going to happen. By the way, uh, that's right, you started <laughs> it. But uh, We'll have to talk to Bill about uh, clipping your hedges later. See, pulled a Bob Ojeda this uh, weekend at tell his home. Tell you, the first thing that when you're doing your hedges with an electric hedge clipper, always know where your fingers are. Well, all ten of them are. Okay, well, nine and a half. As, uh, well, you knew where nine of them were. Nine of them were still on your hands. One was down there on the ground. So McComley is the batter, and he was at the plate when Worst was picked off of second. That was before Worst was hit in the face, and the emergency squad came. Well, if you've missed the first inning, you've missed a lot. We'll try to recap. Hard hit ball towards left field. Salerno makes the grab. A lot of uh, people applauding <laughs> only because it was caught. Somebody caught a, a baseball today. Hard hit ball by McComley. Do you get the feeling that if the, if the umpires got together right now and said, both coaches come here, coaches, I know it's 2-1, to one, but would you mind if we start this game over again? Both coaches would jump at the opportunity. Unbelievable first inning for both teams. Joe Baubles is the batter. Bobbles the junior left fielder for Randolph. Bobbles a 280 hitter. Pete Litachevsky says you won't find a player with a better attitude on this team than Joe. And now the as we look at uh, the head coach, the emergency squad I guess is going to come over now and and look at worse. Loop towards left and it's going to fall in for a single just in front of Salerno. And a throw back towards first. And Baubles got in in time. So the first hit of the ball game belongs to Joe Baubles. You know what it is? See, it's a neutral site, so they're using uh, baseballs they're not familiar with. They're using those balls, you know, they have sand in the bottom. And that when you roll it, it kind of, you know, <laughs> bo -thunk, bo -thunk, thunk. It's been an unusual start to this ball game. This is, yes, it is the Section 2 Group 4 Championship. The winner will advance into the state semifinals. Frank Sallow, the designated hitter, is the batter. He's way out in front of that curveball. Eric Rothfeld on the mound for the Lancers. Has just given up the first hit of the ball game for either team. Well, in all seriousness, these two teams are combined uh, 39 and 11. These are two very solid baseball teams. They would not be here today if they were not. Yeah, certainly. They just both got off to horrible right. starts. A little nervous, as you said. Uh, a big game, obviously, for both teams. Neutral site. Actually, interestingly enough, although we are in Morris County, Livingston probably closer to this site than Morris County's Randolph. Grounded towards short, slowly hit ball. Malucci flips to second, not in time. Meyerhofer turned it, but again, such a slowly hit ball, they only had a shot at one. So it's down to the bottom part of the order for Randolph, and this is Justin Mezzacapo, the junior shortstop. So Sallow, the new runner at first base, he's the DH batting for Saratsky. And Sallow is going, hit and run, tipped mm -hmm. away. Interesting with your number nine batter up to try a hit and run. Normally we say, uh, well, if he gets thrown out, this certain batter leads off the next inning, but you don't really want your number nine batter leading off the next inning. But the way balls are being thrown around, I guess both coaches now are going to try to force the action. Called strike two to Mezzacapo. 
Rothfeld on the mound must have thrown to second for pickoff attempts about half a dozen times, but doesn't throw to first, at least not yet. Well, he got somebody at second. Yes, he, he got did. worst and almost had another. There is the throw to first. By the way, coaching down at first base for Randolph is Gary Mezzacapo, who is the uncle of the batter, Justin. Here's the 0-2 pitch. No movement. Grounded towards first. It's a foul ball. Foul ball. Gloved nicely by Conway, but called foul. Two one the score, Randolph in front. Randolph scored two in the top of the first on no hits. Livingston came back in the bottom of the first, scoring one with no hits and four Randolph errors. Outfield shaded towards right for Mezzacapo. Big gap down the left field line for the right-handed hitting shortstop. And he'll ground it towards first. It's a foul ball. <laughs> that was called by the home plate umpire, Hector Martinez. Before the ball reaches the bag, it's always responsibility of the home plate umpire. Once it passes the bag, it becomes the responsibility of the base umpire. Two away, top half of inning number two. A coin flip determined the home team since we are at a neutral site and this is a championship game. And the flip favored Livingston. That's why they are the home team today and they will bat last. Sallow holds, pitches high, throw to first. Not in time, a little bit in the dirt. Conway couldn't scoop it up. So Zach Edelman with the quick toss from behind the plate. It's interesting to see that the teams are not gun shy. You might yeah. think after six errors in the first inning, they might be hesitant to try those plays. But Edelman saw an opportunity and gunned it down to first. Good to see that he wasn't taken out of the ball game. Runners going. Sallow on the move. Loop towards right. It's going to fall in for a hit. The second baseman, Meyerhofer, retrieves the single. And runners will hold it first and third. Well, Mezzacapo went to right field twice. Ground balls off the first base side. And then fists this one over the first baseman's hit. So 8-9. Come on. Runners at the corners, and we're up to the top of the order for Dave Esposito. Esposito scored the first run of the ball game. A walk, a steal, a wild pitch, and a steal of home on a delayed double steal. With two down, the Lancers, of course, have a choice of first or second. Well, we saw them in the same situation last inning. Use that little delay double steal. That usually works once, not twice. Grounded to the mound. It's a slow roller. Got to go to first. Not in time. Play down to third. Got the runner going. Runner strayed much too far around second base, but Sallow scores on the infield single. And Randolph takes a 3-1 lead. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more sectional championship baseball. Number 47. To the left of the screen is Pete Litachevsky. Pete in his fourth year as head coach of the Randolph Rams. For three seasons, he was the freshman coach at Randolph. Randolph coming off a loss in their most recent game. They lost to Morris Hills, an 8-4 score. They are currently 17-6. We don't do Randolph all that much, of course, because they're out of the TV3 area. But, Paul, I think one of the last times, if not the last time we saw them, the last words I heard you say were, and it's good. <laughs> of course, Bill referring to the famous or infamous Randolph-Montclair football game. One of the greatest football games in New Jersey history, I would dare say. Yeah. 
So three hits in the inning for Randolph. And there were no errors. First batter for Livingston bunts it foul of third base. So for Livingston, it is Conway, Salerno, and Edelman. Numbers 6, 7, and 8. Randolph, for the past three years, has been a Group 4 school, moving up from Group 3. Here's the pitch from Saratsky. So Livingston with one run, they don't have a hit. A couple errors. Randolph, four runs. They have three hits, four errors. Grounded off the plate, and it's going to go foul. By the time McCamley got in from third base, it had already gone foul, and in a way, a good break for Randolph, because more than likely Conway beats that one out. Between innings, the grounds crew here at Chatham comes out with a, a water-contained backpack, and they are watering down the home plate area and around the bases. Mm -hmm. Turned into a beautiful day. Conway looks at strike three. And naturally the ball gets thrown into left field after strikeout. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It still counts as a strikeout. It has just been one unusual day. Strikeout number one for Saratsky, the junior right-hander for Randolph. And he just froze Conway on a nice curveball. Jerry Salerno, the left fielder, steps in. Salerno batting in the number seven spot for the Livingston Lancers. Again, Livingston comes in at 22-5, and five, and yes, although Livingston beat Randolph twice, when the state tournament seeds, they go strictly on record. And at that point, Randolph had a better record. So Randolph was given the nod as the number one seed in the section. As a matter of fact, Livingston was only the number three seed. Second seed went to Union High School. Livingston eventually knocked them off to advance to this sectional championship game. Salerno loops one towards left. Tough chance for Bobbles. Bobbles dives. He's not going to get a hold of this one, so the Lancers have their first hit. It's a looping fly ball to left for Jerry Salerno. Nice effort by Bobbles out in left field. Dole for it. But unlike football, in baseball, the ground can cause a fumble. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, Bobbles looked like he had a shot at it, but when he the glove came down, just couldn't hold on. Yeah. There's a look at it. Watch the dive. Nice effort. Bobbles now. Actually, never really got the glove around it. Would have been a great catch. Zach Edelman, the batter. Edelman hitting 345 with 17 runs knocked home. Randolph three, Livingston one. Hard hit ball, right field, curving away from the fielder. It's going to be in for extra bases for Edelman. Edelman headed to second. Salerno rounding third. He will score on the play, and Edelman is going to be held at third. So it's a triple and an RBI for Zach Edelman, and it's a 3-2 ball game with the tying run 90 feet away. And you could see as soon as it left the bat, there was just no chance for Rupert and Wright as the ball was hooking toward the line and was going to land fair. Smart move down at third by Coach Schmidt to hold his runner with only one out. That's a tying run at third. Now watch the ball as Salerno gets all of this one to right field. And the hook of the ball will carry it toward the line. Curving away from Rupert. And once it lands, it's extra bases. 3-2 ball game. Tommy Oram is up, and Oram takes strike one. Interesting, Paul. It's 3-2, bottom of the second, but the Randolph infield is in. For Edelman, his third triple of the season. But more importantly, his 18th RBI. So Oram is the batter, and the infield is in with tying run at third. Fly ball hit towards right center. It should tie the ball game up. The right fielder, Rupert, makes the play. And Edelman will slide across the plate. And we're tied at three. 
Good. It's 3-3. Three, three. We start all over again. So a sack fly to right field for Orem. And there are now two away as we head to the top of the order for Brian Meyerhofer. Two across in the inning. Salerno singled. Edelman tripled him in. And Orem scores Edelman with the sack fly. And yes, we are tied at three apiece in this Section 2 Group 4 State Championship game. Sky towards left. It is curving foul. And in foul territory, Bobbles makes the play to end the inning. But in the inning, Livingston scores twice, and we've got a 3-3 sectional championship game. The device we told you about last inning, where the grounds crew is coming out to soak down the field a little bit, keep a little dust down, make the footing around the bases a little better for the teams. So the Chatham High School <coughs> Maintenance Department doing their job in today's ball game, and we have to thank Athletic Director Tony Mack, who is our host for today's ball game here at Chatham. I'm Paul Spahala. With me, Bill Bromberg, and uh, Bill. It's been an unusual one, no doubt about that. <laughs> three, three, our score, and you're watching the sectional championship. And now to carry you through the excitement, and hopefully it will tone down just a bit. Carry through the next three innings here with Bill Bromberg, the right. gardener. <laughs> I'm going to try to uh, straighten out this mess that you have handed me. <laughs> Top of the third, tied at three. Matt Art is on the catcher and the number two batter in the Randolph Ram lineup will lead off. As we mentioned, Matt has seven doubles, triples, and homers, 21 extra base hits, and was batting 520 when we started play. Interestingly enough, both innings for Randolph have ended on the bases rather than at the bat. Mm -hmm. Art is on his first at bat, pop to the mound. 101. No need for me to call balls and strikes if you don't hear her. home plate umpire Hector Martinez call it a strike. We know it's a ball. <laughs> Rothfeld's pitch, chopped down the third base side, foul. One and two on Art is on. These two teams, as Paul mentioned, this is their third meeting. Randolph has lost twice to Livingston. So Livingston is now batted 15 times, 15 innings worth, against Randolph. And Paul, so far they've scored in those 15 innings 26 runs. 12 runs in one game, 11 in another. One a home game, one a road game. And three so far today. Swung at a pitch probably up around his head. And it's a strikeout for Eric Rothfeld. That's his... Third strikeout of the ball game. Artizone decides to go for the high one. Here's a look at it on the replay. And we all said, often said those ones in your eyes mm -hmm. awful tempting, and that's about where that one was for the junior catcher. Number three batter Mark McLean, who was a strikeout victim, his first at bat, the first baseman. Change up out in front of it is McLean. Strike one. Well, if you're looking for strikeout excitement, we hope you were with us for last week's GNT semifinal, which featured Nutley and Cedar Grove as Larry Mose of Nutley struck out 15 in a seven-inning game. 101. And you will get a chance to see the GNT championship game this week on TV3 as West Essex goes against Nutley. The winner will have their first ever GNT title. Two and one article in the paper this morning about Larry Mose and one line caught my attention that he's been clocked as high this year as 92 miles an hour. This is a high school youngster. Not consistently of course, but he has thrown at 92. He's consistently in the upper 80. 2-1 pitch. Off the first base side but foul. Just foul. 2-2 two and two on Mark McClain. Three-man umpiring crew for this sectional championship game. Of course, at the plate and down both lines just for such a situation. And it's good to see you don't want a game decided because a two-man crew, they're, of course, not able to be in 
the best position all the time. With a three-man crew, you have a much better opportunity for proper placement. Pat Tillier, Ralph Rotundo are the base umpires. McLean back in, two and two on him. Rothfell rocks and the pitch. Hits him, and he hit him with a fastball. And that one was felt by Mark McLean. I got him right in the shoulder area. Now, wait, I, you know, this may have hit the bat first because he's, he's not still going anywhere. Let's take a quick look at it. You make the call at home. Well, okay. the call's already been made here. Might have got the knob of the yeah. bat uh, or right, either, right either near that, the handle. Yeah, might have nicked off the pinky. Ooh, ow. Hurts me. How do you cut your uh, How do you cut your finger? Don't talk trim to me. in the hedges. Funny, McLean should you know if he was smart enough, he was in too much pain. Probably should have told the umpire I got hit and just walked the first. Been interesting to see what would have happened. Two two pitch, fouled over our heads. <laughs> it's not been a good week for me. Leave me be. And that will go into Mrs. Minkowitz's backyard. Some of the homes surrounding the field here in Chatham. Two and two, one out, top of the third inning. Randolph and Livingston tied at three. Again, fouled at the plate. Let me make a quick editorial comment. State of New Jersey hired three umpires for this game today. I, I wish they had hired a trainer. We saw a young man get injured earlier, and the emergency squad had to respond. This is a state championship game. Trainers should be here. Two-two pitch. Hit hard and deep to left field, but Jerry Solano is playing in another county. Now in another area code, and about 380 feet from home plate makes the catch. Jerry Salerno was back deep for that one, and as we mentioned before, lots of room to run here at Chatham High School. And Salerno just kept going back on that one, and that one was hit well up into the air, so Salerno had plenty of time to track it down. Yeah, any field that had a fence, that would have been a home run. Here's John Rupert. He walked. He stole second. He eventually came around to score. Ground ball toward the center. Malucci, the shortstop, bobbles it. That'll be the third error. It's contagious sometimes. So it comes with two outs, and now Rupert is on at first. In some defense to Malucci, we were, we were watching this uh, infield earlier, Paul, and it was taking some pretty bad hops. So it's a very hard infield right now. There's not been much rain in this area. You see that one took a big hop and then stayed low on, Malu on uh, Malucci. Rich Wirtz. But it is still the third error against the Lancers. Wirtz struck out and reached second his first at bat. What did you say? <laughs> Ground ball on the right side. Convenient hop for Meyerhofer over to first. And that retires the side. Now Renz a hit, but there was an error, and a runner left on base. We go to the bottom of the third, and it's Livingston and Randolph tied at 3-3. Every day you bring your lounge chair and sit in the shade. A big crowd has gathered at Chatham High School. for well, the Nuts 2 Group 4 championship between Randolph and Livingston. Tied at three as we go to the bottom of the third, Livingston the home team. For the most part, Livingston fans on the third base side. Uh, by the way, the gentleman in the white shirt in the middle of your picture there, that's Tony Hope, the athletic director for Livingston High School. Soon to, Soon be, to retired. be retired. Mm -hmm. athletic director. We wish Tony the best. Joy his retirement. Always was a, a huge help to TV3 mm -hmm. and certainly one of the legacies of, of his term as AD, the brand new synthetic turf at Livingston High School, which has been in use for many events, whether they be field hockey, soccer, the Essex County Soccer Championships were there last fall, lots of the track and field with the lights there at Livingston, so uh, a really a great complex up at Livingston High School. Jason Halper bunts the ball in front of the mound. This is what he did his first time. The catcher passes on it, guns to first base. That was a BB by Artizone to first, and Paul... He needed to throw it that hard to get Halper. His coach, Pete Litachevsky, says he's one of the top ten players in New Jersey high school baseball, and maybe he just showed you why there. We talked about his hitting stats. Well, there was some defense by Matt Artizone. 
quickly out from the plate, and he gunned down an extremely fast Jason Halper. Keith Caggiano reached on an error. Who hasn't? And he scored back in the, or did not score. He got left at third. Ball hit deep to left center field. This could be trouble. Esposito goes back. This is over his head and about 400 feet from home. Around second is Caggiano. The ball is now being retrieved. Caggiano is coming home with a tie-breaking run as Livingston takes the lead 4-3. to three. Caggiano just crushed that one to left field. He could have stopped between second and third, read the sports section, and then kept running and still scored standing up. He just crushed that one. That's just the, the word you have to use. Watch it on replay. Home run. <laughs> I, and, and again, you, you lose perspective because there is no fence. Had there been a fence, it would have been one of those situations. Look at that. The lacrosse players are starting to scramble. And yeah. that one almost rolls to the school. And right here, Caggiano, he's at third base as the relay is starting. And right here, he says, wait a second. Let me, let enjoy, me enjoy this one a little bit. For Caggiano, his fourth home run and his, are you ready? 39th run batted in. Pitcher Eric Rothfeld walked. And his first pitch is ball one, and now it's strike one, one and one. You know, through the years, Bill, and we've done Livingston baseball a lot through the years, mm -hmm. one of the earliest towns that had suburban cable vision, we have seen some mammoth home runs off the bats of, in particular, Livingston batters. 2-1. And Caggiano adds his name to that list, and uh, again, without a, a IBM tape measure, as they do in the Major League Parks, uh, he might have even be on top of that list now, because that ball just yeah. took off. A guy named Scott Parsons had hit a few of those. Pitches foul back. I mentioned that because Scott's down at third coaching for Livingston. Remember him playing at the GNT at Doc Gelson Verona, and he crunching a couple down that hill. Garrett Newbart, two years ago, won the GNT with a similar home run to left field. And again, it's just been some mammoth home runs hit by Livingston players in front of the TV3 camera. Curveball, strike three looking against Rothfeld. And give Sirotsky some credit because after that home run, he kept his concentration. This is a dandy curveball. Big break. Right over the top of the head and right into the strike zone. Two down for Dave Malucci, the shortstop, grounded out to short. So Livingston, down early and not playing well, has come back and leads 4-3 in the bottom of the third. Scored in every inning so far. Popped up, out of play. Into Mrs. Hoosjard? Minkowitz. Minkowitz. She was speaking with us earlier today. Offered us some refreshments on this very warm day in Chatham. And did you accept? Oh, of course. Thank you. Pitch is high. 2-1. Malucci is the number five batter. A 444 batter at start of play. Hard hit up the middle. There's a clean single to center field. Fourth base hit for the Lancers. Well, in the early going, the gloves or, in a way, the lack of glove work was the story of this ball game, and now it's becoming the stick work, particularly of Livingston. With two outs, Billy Conway will step in. Conway looked at a third strike. You start the second inning. And, of course, you think about what might have been. Remember, Halper started this inning out by a heartbeat at first. And, of course, he could have crawled home on the homer by Caggiano. But, again, it is a game of close plays, and that's why it's only a one-run ball game. 1-0 one oh on Conway. 2-0. Oh. Conway does some pitching for this Livingston team. He's 1-0 oh this season with three saves. Could very well be seen before this one's over. 2-0 oh pitch. Curve, line in the right center field. There's another base hit. And a skips past the right fielder, Rupert. And this is extra bases. Round third is Malucci. He gets the green light. Now it's bobbled in the outfield. Headed over to third base is Conway. He's got the green light to try to score. Here's the throw. It's going to be a tag. And he is out at the plate. However, Malucci did score. Earlier in the inning, Caggiano had scored. So Livingston comes up with two runs in the home third. 
And now at the end of three innings of play, it's Livingston five, Randolph three. Suburban Cable Vision TV3, your local programming channel. Far and away the national leader in awards for cable excellence, TV3 brings your interests to the screen. Well known for our coverage of high school athletics all year round, TV3 is also the arts, parades, Conway down at first base with a triple to drive in his 18th run of the season and give Livingston a two-run lead. Paul looked like it was going to be a line single, but the ball just skipped on that outfield grass. Yeah, again, hard field, and he did place it well, and the ball just keeps rolling. And as you can see, nicely placed between the outfielders. Rupert finally chased it down. This is Malucci easily scoring on the play. And then it just became a, the relay throw. Artizone takes over, dives for the plate, and he beats Conway to the plate. But Billy Conway with an RBI triple, and that's why Livingston holds right now a 5-3 lead. Look at those numbers, 3-3-4, three, 5-5-3. Three, five, five, three. So Randolph, who at one time led by two runs in this game, now finds himself two down. As we go to the fourth inning, it's Mike McCambly, the sophomore fly out to left field. He's the number six batter in the lineup. So Rothfeld now with a lead, and what does he do? The first pitch, he... Nicks one off McCambly, who reaches first on the hit by batter. Hit by pitch. Joe Baubles, the left fielder, left handed batter, one for one with a base hit single, went to the opposite field, hit it to left. Takes this one on the left side. Shortstop Malucci watches it bounce over his head in the left field. Up with it is Salerno and gets it back in, and he throws it wide, but backing up nicely is Billy Conway. And just like that, Randolph has first and third on two pitches here in the fourth inning. And it's the kind of game where, Paul, I don't think any lead is going to be safe today. And although, let's go back to the Conway triple. Hard hit ball, well placed. But, yes, again, the ground here is hard. And, again, lack of rain. Another example of the fact that we're playing a, a hard, dry field. Watch this one go over Malucci. Long. No chance at it. I mean, Malucci backed up, and he had no chance at that one. So runners on first and third. Fourth hit of the game. And again, there's not nothing much you can do about no. it. I mean, not get, a, get a fire truck out here as they do in Carteret and soak down the field. But again, we're playing on a very hard, very fast field. Designated hitter Frank Sallow reached on a force play and scored. Takes a pitch, strike on. Wonder how serious that fake bunt was. Whether he was just showing it to show it, or whether Randolph might have had some sort of play on. Still somewhat early in this ball game. Get the feeling that uh, eight runs will not be all we will see today. <laughs> Throw to first. The outfielders have moved back. Uh, I think everybody realizes how quick the surface is now, and the outfielders noticeably have moved back, oh, a good four or five strides from where they were playing earlier in the game. First and third, none out. One strike pitch, back to the mound. Holds the runner, now goes to first, which is probably the safest and smartest play by Rothfeld, and there's one out. Runners, however, on second and third. Yeah, Rothfeld had two quick decisions to make. Number one, he had to look the runner back to third because McCamley had come off. Once he did that, he was unable to catch Bobbles going to second base, who, of course, left on contact. So then, of course, Rothfell was left with his last decision, which was the best one, go to first, get a sure out. Number nine batter Justin Masacapo singled his first out, and the infield is in. Interesting, with a two-run lead that you would bring your infield in. But Livingston does not want... Randolph to score. Of course, a clean single here. Paul ties the game. Now, remember, I was just going to add quickly here. The two teams have played each other, so it's not as if you're playing someone new. It could be that they're more familiar with what Mezzacapo does and his tendencies of where he might hit the ball. That's that's all I, I can guess at this point. Again, third meeting between these two mm -hmm. teams. First that back, he singled over the first baseman's head down the right field line. High ball on. 
And his first at bat, Mezzacapo had fouled off several pitches on the first base side. So at least in this first go around, he was not able to get the bat around on Rothfeld. 1-0, two runners lead away. Again on the first base side, and this one will be caught by Conway. Two down. Soft little pop-up to Conway at first. And now a very dangerous hitter, but a very big hitter in this ballgame. Dave Esposito, who is the leadoff batter. He's going to change helmets with the runner at second, Bobbles. Esposito is one for one officially. He reached on a walk his first at bat, scored. And his last at bat, he had an infield base hit, which drove in a run. A swinging bunt, if you will, which on a bang-bang play at first, he was ruled safe. However, there was an out on the play. <laughs> Mezzacapo was thrown <laughs> out going to, to third. Trying to get the third. Out of the stretch now is Rothfeld. Of course, the infield back at its normal depth. Foul tip. The winner of this game gets the winner of the Hackensack Memorial of West New York game being played as we speak up in North Jersey. That will be the North semifinal. The winner of that game advances to Saturday's group championship game. Yeah, we should sit down and discuss how this works. First you start in your section. If you win your section, you play the winner of the other section. Until ultimately there's only one team left from your group. These are both group four schools, the largest group in the state of New Jersey. Going North by enrollment. North one always plays North two in the semis. Central always plays South. Timeout, Scott Parsons. The assistant coach will go out to the mound and talk to Eric Rothfeld. Scott, of course, uh, one of the finest athletes to come out of Livingston High. Multi-sport athlete. Played in the minor league chain for, I want to say Cleveland. I'm not sure that's 100% right. I was drafted. I know that Alpert played for Cleveland. Okay. George Alpert, another great mm -hmm. Livingston athlete, particularly in baseball. But Parsons, also a football player. Some great runs for that Livingston football team through the years under Al Jacobson. And continuing that great tradition in baseball. One of the best baseball schools in the county and in the state, Livingston High School. One strike on Esposito. A little count and mouse going on. You might say, well, first base is open, but Matt Art is on deck, and you certainly don't want to face him with the bases loaded. And I don't know of if course, Esposito represents the go-ahead run. I'm not so sure you want to face Artizone at all. Fisted on the first base side. It is a fair ball. Stepping on the bag is Conway, and that retires the side. We are going to have an argument now at first as both coaches from Randolph come down the line to argue this call. We'll keep it here just for a second while this argument ensues. Home plate umpire... Hector Martinez, whose call it is until it reaches the bag, ruled that it was fair. The and question now he's explaining is, it. Conway reaches up, and I, I at first thought it might hit the bag. Well, maybe we'll take a look at it when we come back. Meanwhile, at the end of three and a half innings of play, it remains Livingston five and Randolph three. first base <laughs> and the question is where did that ball roll where was it picked up well get a look at it, it goes right down the dirt watch the glove it's fair it's, it's fair still. it's fair and now ooh, I think it'd be foul Conway picked it up on that hop right above the bag the call by the umpires fair ball and as you said Hector Martinez with the call since it was still before the bag. 7-8-9 for the Lancers in the bottom half of inning four. Jerry Salerno, Zach Edelman, Tommy Aram. First pitch is fouled behind the plate, strike one. Salerno was a leadoff batter in the, or uh, batted second in the second inning and single and scored at the time was the 
first hit for the Lancers, who now have five hits to go with their five runs. Curve hangs high, 101. Left fielder Baubles has swung way around to left center, giving Salerno much of the line. One and two. And just in case you're curious, there is a National Federation rule, National Federation, of course, of high school athletic associations, there is a rule against television replay being used for any kind of judgment <laughs> call. <laughs> One, two, pitch. High two and two. Every once in a while, and it just happened here. We're at a game where a close play happens, and you hear someone, some fan saying, check the replay out. Well, can't do that. We can do it. The other referees can't. Two, two. And our angle on that clearly was not the best of angles. It looked uh, from our angle that it was foul, but looking right down the line was Hector Martinez. And he had the best angle of anyone. I remember the bag is situated on the ba on the uh, the foul line. Yep. Hits the base. It's fair ball. And at first, that's what I thought it was going to do. I thought it was going to hit the base, bounce away from Conway. With the way things had gone in this game, I figured naturally that's going to happen. High infield pop-up on the right side. First baseman McLean. Everybody converges. And who caught it? We're looking to see who caught First it. First baseman third, caught it. McLean third baseman, caught it. Third baseman Campbell, he came, oh, maybe 80 feet from third base and caught it right in front of first baseman McLean. And McLean is saying to him, what are you doing here? Stay on your own side of the field. Now, Bill, you know through the years I always defend first baseman as a former first sacker myself. And I'm going to side with McLean on this one. Wait oh, a second. Absolutely. I went 15 feet for that one. It's my ball. I've got the big glove. Let me take it. Zach Edelman, a booming triple to right field. Knocked in his 18th run of the season. There's the strike. Always agree with the first baseman. <laughs> Especially if he's as big as Mark McClain. One strike pitch. Curve. Swinging bunt in front of the mound. Saratsky on it. He has to hurry. Got him. And McLean may have been stepped on as Edelman went by. Two down. That'll bring up number nine batter, Tommy Aram, the only non-senior in the Livingston lineup. He's a junior. And that, of course, another way how you can tell people, adults who were former first basemen. We've all got puncture wounds on our ankles. <laughs> or almost had a sacrifice fly to right field. I saw an article in the Baseball Weekly a fan had written in saying, uh, they're talking about rule changes. and The rule that I have been in favor of for many years. A sack fly. No time at bat? Why? If a guy's on third and you had a ground ball to short, you're charged with a time at bat. To run scores. Why should you not be charged if you hit a fly ball? You have been pushing for this. Hey, you're not trying to hit a fly ball. You're, you're trying to hit a home run. Yeah, I know. You're not trying to hit a fly ball, though. You didn't sacrifice your at bat. You took a full swing. Or I'm the number nine batter, but was batting 350. And the RBI in the second inning was his 20th. And he takes a walk with two outs here in the fourth. Second walk issued. Top of the lineup, Ryan Meyerhofer, who has twice flied out to left. Once in fair territory and once in foul territory. And there's no doubt that the Randolph outfielders are playing much closer yeah. than the Livingston outfielders were. Bumbles and left has not moved back, which kind of surprises me. We're almost off the pitcher, but in the center field for a base hit. So with two outs, the Lancers have something going. First and second. Sixth base hit for Livingston. First bow by Meyerhofer. Right through the originator, as they <laughs> say. Right back up at the mound. Saratsky had to skip out of the way. And still, Worst had a shot at it. Jason Halper, the batter. Jason reached on an error. And last time up, tried to bunt. Was thrown out by a great throw by catcher Matt Artizone. High inside, ball one. Halper with lots of speed. As we said, a much better lefty hitter than righty. 424 lefty, 286 righty. 
Two on, two out. Fourth inning. Livingston leads 5-3. Pop up off the third base side. Maybe be playable. Third baseman McCambly leaning against the out-of-play line. Makes the catch to retire the side. For Livingston in the fourth inning. No runs a hit. Two left on base. We go to the fifth. It's Livingston 5 and Randolph 3. There's the out-of-play line. If you stay on the field side of that line, if you will, the ball is in play. Once you break the plane, though, it's out of play. And here is that pop-up ball. Now watch what McCambly does. He knows where that line is. Watch, he'll plant his feet and make the catch. And you see he wants to keep his balance. And yes, he was in the <laughs> field of play as he makes that play. A very nice play by the sophomore, Mike McCambly. Looked like a football receiver trying to keep the feet in bounds. And the same theory applies. Matto Artizone, the batter, the catcher, hits one to deep short. Long throw by Malucci is offline, and that will be a hit and an error. So Artizone gets the infield single. We'll get the second on the throwing error by Malucci. Fourth hit of the ball game for Randolph, and consequently the fourth error against the Livingston Lancers. Tying run comes to plate for Rand uh, Randolph, and they have the big hit batters up as a Randolph Ram flag breaks out on the third base side. Mark McClain, who has struck out and fly deep, and I mean deep, to left field. And Salerno, with due respect, is playing deep and now moves even deeper and still moving back. McClain batting 5-10. With no fence here at Chatham High School, our center field camera technically is in play. Dan Heaster's out there. I mean, Dan, is, he's buried out there. He's a good 390 feet away, but he is technically in play. Our scaffolding is considered a wall. Any ball that hits it and bounds off is in play. 1-0. 2-0. Any ball that Dan catches, he keeps. <laughs> Did he bring a net? Unless he's, unless he's a Cub fan, because they, of course, throw all home runs yeah. back. 2-0. Top of the fifth. Livingston 5, Randolph 3. But Randolph has a runner at second with nobody out. 2-0 pitch. Curve. Sliced on the right field side. If it's fair, it's trouble. And it's going to be a fair ball. Artizone had to wait and see. Now he goes only to third. This is not a good piece of base running by Matt Artizone. He should have been halfway, but he went back to tag. And as a result, on the double by McLean, Artizone is only able to move from second to third. And his coach also a little bit upset with this play. There you see the ball is fair, certainly by a good foot. Second and third, two doubles. Not, not, not the world's worst mistake because now there's no force on. He's not a, a, a crucial run, per se, but again... Should John, have been playing halfway. John Rupert, the cleanup batter, has been on twice but has no hits. He walked once and reached on an error. Infield, deep. Ball one. They will give up the run, but they will not give up a big inning. They check with the umpire to see if he broke his wrist, and it was called no swing. And again, going back to last inning, just because they played each other so often, I feel that their John Schmidt is comfortable with playing the infield in against that number nine hitter, Mezzacapo as opposed to doing it now. 1-0 on Rupert. There is warm-up action for Randolph. It is directly below us, though I cannot get you a number at the moment. Interesting that Randolph will be warming up a pitcher while they are at bat. Matter of fact, it is McCambly, number 40, the third baseman, mm -hmm. who is warming up. 1-1. One, one. Slice foul at the first, the first base side, so it's 1-2. and two. Even more interesting, Interestingly, he's on double deck. There, there is. is McCambly, number 40. Double deck, is that a new term here? I've heard it before. Okay, I like it. I like it. It's an old term started by a old first manager named McDonald, double decker. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that, was a, that was a reach. <clears throat> North 2, Group 4, state championship game. If we get a, a break in the action, we'll show you the gentleman who has the most precarious view of this game. That is Don Schwartz, Livingston photographer. 
Swung on a pitch, strike three. A big strikeout by Rothfeld, his fourth. There is Don Schwartz, why he's precarious as you see he's above that fence, but he's only about 35 feet away from home plate. And any right-handed batter that lashes one down the right field line, Don, that's a, a camera that you're gonna have to replace. Rich Wirtz struck out but reached first when the ball got away from the catcher and the throw to first wound up in right field. And this last time up he grounded second. And now with one out ball, the infield is in. No move to third is necessary, no balk, although everyone calls it, of course. And again, it could just be the familiarity of the hitter's tendencies. McCambly now on deck, he stopped warming up. First pitch to work. Foul at the plate. You don't often get this kind of strategy the further you go in the state tournament because you've rarely seen your mm -hmm. opponent yeah. in the north one section or further the further you go along at that point you almost play it straight according to a book and yet there was an example a couple of years ago which we'll talk about where in the state semifinal state semifinal two teams from the same conference played and i'm trying to remember who it was they were in the same conference uh, was I want to think it was New Providence or maybe Carteret. Oh, yeah, you're right. New Providence in the Middlesex. Middlesex, that's what it was. They played in the state championship game. Oh, <laughs> worse yet. <laughs> and they were conference rivals. Fouled off on the first base side out of play. Because New Providence is from Section 2. As we said earlier in the semis, they play Section 1. Middlesex High School is in Central, Central. Jersey. Right. Good so point. The Mountain Valley Conference does cross those sectional lines. Proud of you. Good memory. <laughs> for a man who almost who a man who forgot where his pinky was yes. when you were cutting your hedges. For a man with nine and a half fingers, that's that's pretty good, huh? Looking at the tying runner down at second, McLean, he gets a huge lead. With the infield in, he knows exactly where they are. And unless a center fielder sneaks in behind him, nobody's gonna pick him off. Look out. Between innings, Paul, you and I were talking. These teams know each other so well, and you kind of get the feeling that there's not all that great much love between these two schools. Of course, they're arch rivals in so many sports. In many sports, that's the thing. So a lot of these players have seen each other before, whether it be soccer, football, basketball, whatever. Curve in the dirt. And the thing is, for the most part, they are good mm -hmm. in those sports. Absolutely, yeah. So they're playing games that are meaningful, mm -hmm. whether it be for conference titles or in sectional games. And as they say, familiarity breeds yes, contempt. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm very familiar with you. <laughs> I resent that. Ground ball to shortstop, knocked down by Malucci, recovered by the second baseman to throw home, not in time. But Meyerhofer makes it a head-up play that you'll ever see to make this play at the plate, but it's now a 5-4 ball game. With the infield in, this is the risk you take. But you know, with the infield back, Paul, this might have gone straight through for a clean single to center. Well, you get another look at it here. Ball hit towards short. Malucci has trouble with the high hop. Now watch Meyerhofer comes in, bare hands the ball, and his body turned towards home, so he says, I'm throwing home. Again, the throw, because it rushed, is low. A perfect throw, they get the out. So it's 5-4. Randolph trails by a run and has runners at first and third. One out for Mike McCambly, who was flying to left and was hit by a pitch. The infield now plays deep, looking for two. Runner goes, taken and held onto by Edelman. The tie breaking run at second base. McCambly was just faking a bunt to off the timing of Edelman. Look at that numbers. Those are that's some pretty crooked numbers up there today. And we're only in the fifth. Top of the fifth. Second and third, one out. Out of the stretch, Rothfield ground ball is short. Malucci holds the runners. Two down. And it's still 5-4 with two out. 
And now Joe Baubles will be left up to, who is two for two today. And the left-handed batter twice has gone the opposite way, both times going to left field. Two runners lead away. Rothfield in a stretch at the pitch. High ball one. Bobbles is the number seven batter in the lineup. Junior left fielder. Rothfeld 1-0 pitch. Taken at the knees. 1-1. -on and I'm good to play to see that Hector Martinez can go to his left and his right. <laughs> That's right. See. There he is, the emphatic strike call. One, one, two, one. Frank Sallow, the designated hitter, waiting his turn. Randolph has seven hits, two of them by Bobble. Line drive right to third baseman Aram, and that will do it. So Randolph chips away a run. They do it on three hits and leave two big runners in scoring position. Livingston's turn in the fifth, leading 5-4. So Mike McCambly warming up between innings, and now he has gone to the mound. McCambly started this game at third, and now, Paul, there he is warming up in the bottom of the fifth. So new third baseman Mike McCambly, a junior, um, a sophomore, excuse me. Joe Bobbles has now moved in from left field. He will play third base. And we're just trying to keep an eye on all the other changes. Well, we I'm just trying to find out who our left fielder is. Well, if we can grab a number, we'll be able to figure it out so who he is. he turns his back on 45. us. 45. So our new outfielder is Frank Sallow. Sallow, who was the DH. So they lose the DH. And Sallow will just bat in that spot. 3-4-5 for Livingston in the bottom of the fifth inning. They lead 5-4, to four, but would very much like to increase that lead. They'll have Caggiano, Rothfeld, and Malucci. Caggiano reached on there, and last time, if you were not with us, he hit a tremendous home run, which must have landed about 380 feet from home and rolled another, oh, maybe 50, 75 more feet. It wound up near the high school. We'll try to give you an idea how far away that is in a second. First pitch is high, ball one. And that's only because it was going uphill. Yeah. Had, it been, had it been level ground, I mean, it easily reaches the high school. I mean, that one hit was just crushed. I like that word. Yes. Orange crushed. Ball two. As we said earlier, there are no fences at Chatham. The high school, where it's closest to left field and center field, is probably 450 feet away or more. 2-0 pitch right back to the middle and snagged by the third baseman turn pitcher McCambly and is one out. Pretty move by the new pitcher. Got that left hand down with the glove and snared the ball coming right back up the middle. Here's a look at it. Cageno hit, hit this one hard. Two hopper, skipped off the front of the mound. Then McCamley just took his time, jogged to first, and made the toss. And pitcher Eric Rothfeld, who has walked and looked at a third strike. High foul out of play. Game started off, if you weren't with us, very ragged on both sides. We had six, count them, six errors in the first inning. But since then, the game has settled in nicely. Two on one play by the same player. Yeah. And now we're down to nitty gritty time in a one run ball game. Driven hard to right field. Tough play for Rupert, but he's there and makes the catch. Two down. Tough because coming off the right-handed bat, it was tailing away from Rupert. But he got over to make the play, and you are right, Bill. It's getting to crunch time. Only six outs left for the Rams. Here's a look at that hard-hit ball. Now, again, coming off the right-handed bat, has a tendency to tail away from Rupert, and there you see he starts, drifts over closer to the line, but is able to put it away. 
got a very nice jump on it. Dave Malucci. David grounded out short. And his last time up, single to center field. One for two. I think that was a strike. Her. Race it into left field. So after watching two nifty pitches, Malucci down 0-2 in the count gets his second hit of the game. A clean single to left. Yeah, good job of pressure hitting by Malucci. Two pitches in a row that he took for strikes, and then all of a sudden decided, well, I can't take any more. Drilled it into left field on the ground. And with two away, the Lancers have something going. Seventh hit for the Lancers. Last inning with two outs, Livingston... Got runners to first and second before going down. This inning, two outs. Now runner at first for Billy Conway, who looked at the third strike. And the last time up hit a triple in the gap to right center field. Conway tried to score on that play and was thrown out the plate. Now we'll have a pinch runner for Dave Malucci down at first. This is Dave Koenig. So Dave Koenig, a junior, will run for Malucci. And I'm quite positive we will see Malucci return to his shortstop position for the 6th and 7th. One strike is the count on Conway, the number 6 batter. Randolph Bench, the coaches, have shifted center fielder Dave Esposito a good 15, 20 feet towards right field in that pause when Koenig came in to run. And that's where Conway hit his big triple. And there's a drive in the right field. Coming in quickly is Rupert. He'll take this on the one hop. Keeps it in front of him nicely. And holding at second base smartly is pinch runner Koenig. He was indecided between second and third and did the smart thing. He went back. So Koenig is on second. Conway with his second hit is on first. Same as last inning with two outs. Livingston has gotten two runners aboard. And now Jerry Salerno, the batter. And this becomes a very big batter for Randolph, down by one. Salerno singled and popped to first, one for two. Look out, one ball. Hard his own with a nice pickup. I was speaking with Matt before the game, and I asked him if his future lies as a catcher, and he said, no, nah, unless I put on some weight, the scouts and other coaches have told me that my future lies as an infielder, and he says he likes second base. Ground ball on the left side. Misakapo will have to hurry. In the dirt, scooped up nicely by McLean, and that retires the side. No runs, two hits, two runners left on. It's getting late for the Rams. The Lancers five, the Rams four. Well, where would I go if I ever wanted to see oh, a Babe Ruth uniform? Well, I would guess the best place to be would be if you can't get to the Hall of Fame, you go visit the gentleman in the dark blue jacket. That is Barry Halper, part owner of the Yankees and one of the most noted collectors of baseball memorabilia in the country. But I think more importantly, he's also a, a good choice uh, as a husband. That is his beautiful wife, Sharon, sitting next to him. And uh, since we have mentioned the name Jason Halper so often, yes, that is his son out in center field for the Lancers. And there he is, number seven. And interestingly, before the game, we visited with uh, Barry, and Paul says the team's doing very well, referring to the Yankees. And Barry responded, yes, if we win today, we win <laughs> referring to the Livingston High School team. And it was a good point because it showed that his loyalties, at least at that moment, were with his son and with the Livingston That's Lancers. Right, where they should be. And to carry you through the sixth and seventh and crown the champion, here's Paul Spahala. All right, bottom of the order starts things off for the Randolph Rams. Frank Sallow, who is now the left fielder. He is 0 for 2 in this ballgame, although he did score a run back in the second inning when Randolph took a 3-1 lead. Since that point, Livingston added two in the second to tie it, two more in the third to take a 5-3 lead, and Randolph scored one of their own. It's a 5-4 ball game, popped up in the infield, and Rothfeld puts it away.
So one away for number nine hitter Justin Mezzacapo. Now remember, they've been playing Mezzacapo very shallow. We'll see what they do here with no one on. Everything he's hit so far today has gone to the right side, and they are overshifting him that way. Outfield certainly shifted around towards right. Infield about normal up. In the dirt, ball one from Eric Rothfeld. Paul, you and I often talk about in situations like this, can the team behind get their big hitters up again? And regardless of what happens here in the sixth, Randolph is guaranteed that the big bats will come around at least one more time. Yeah, at the very least two, three, and four. Way back to the screen. That one just got away from Rothfeld. You're watching the Livingston Lancers, winners of six in a row, seven of their last eight, and 20 of their last 23. They have lost six this year, excuse me, five this year, but four of them have been one-run losses. And you know, the way March was this year, you could almost throw out the first three, four, five games teams played because they were almost like the preseason. Nobody got in scrimmages because of the blizzard. Hard hit ball towards right. Caggiano is there. Takes a step or two back and puts it away. Lancers got practice in. Because remember, the Lancers practiced on the artificial turf. Yep. So they did get some practice in. So two away, we go to the top of the order for Dave Esposito. Let's see if the Rams can make something happen with two away. They are down to four outs in this ballgame. Esposito is one for two in this ballgame. Walked in the first. Reached on an infield single in the second and grounded out to first in the fourth inning. And that was the most controversial play of this ballgame so far. A little grounder hit down the line at first with runners on second and third. Billy Conway picked it up right on top of the bag. The umpire said fair. Randolph coaches said foul. <laughs> the man in blue won the argument. And Randolph stranded two runners that inning. The Section 2 Group 4 Championship on the line for these two teams. And by the way, Randolph has never won a sectional championship in baseball. They've reached the sectional final before, but they have never won the sectional title. Matter of fact, last year, they made it to the sectional championship game, losing to Elizabeth 7-6. That one's high, ball four for Esposito. So with two away, Esposito is on. 17 steals. He represents the tying run, the number two batter up. Well, if you're ever going to send them, now's the time. Well, we talked in the beginning about Rothfeld. Not much strikeouts, not many walks, and that holds true today. Four strikeouts in this, the sixth inning, and that was only his third walk allowed. Very consistent pitcher. Two away, Artizone is the batter. Will Esposito steal? Not on the first pitch. Artizone swings through it, strike one. Well, you don't want to take the bat out of Artizone's hand, certainly, but... At the same time, I would like the runner Esposito at scoring position at second. And the worst that could happen is Artizone leads off to seven. And that's what Livingston is thinking about as they try to keep Esposito close. Artizone certainly would like a chance to knock home a run. There goes Esposito, grounded down the line at third. It hits the bag. A good break for Livingston. I'll tell you why in a second. Returned by Salerno. And Artizone is going to head into second base. And the reason why it's a good play for Livingston, if that doesn't hit the bag, it probably curls down into foul territory, and Esposito scores the tying run. It hits the bag, goes to Salerno, and runners are at second and third. Credit Artizone with a single, and he takes second base on the throw in. And now John Schmidt is going to call for time. And Mark McLean, big Mark McLean, who doubled his last at-bat, is up. And this is a huge strategy session at the mound. So of all the unusual things that have happened in this ball game, I was waiting for a ball to hit a base, and it did, and it goes in Livingston's favor, although it was a hard-hit single for Artizone. In my opinion, it scores the run. Yeah, I think so, too. Renner was going on the pitch. 
Salerno, of course, has a much further run to get to the ball. That's the point. Salerno would have had to run 100 feet to get it instead of maybe 30. So McLean, the batter. Remember, there are two away, and McLean is going to be walked. An intentional walk in high school baseball. You don't have to throw it. You just send the runner down. To face number four batter, John Rupert. And, of course, the strategy is force at every base. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run at second. So you're not mm -hmm. as concerned with that runner at first. You certainly don't want him to score if you're Livingston. Of course, Rothbell now must throw strikes. And again, the defense can play back everywhere and go for the shortest out. John Rupert, the batter, walked, reached on an error, struck out. Ball one gets away, no advance made by Esposito. Well, Paul, going back to the point we made at the top of this inning, if Randolph does not score here, it will be up to the bottom part of the lineup to win it in the seventh. That's true. So it's a huge at-bat for John Rupert. Quick meeting between Rupert and Coach Litashevsky in the third base coaching box. Was there a signal missed? Is there a signal on? I doubt it. Or did he tell him, don't swing till you get a strike? That could be. 2-0. and oh. And again, the ball gets away from Edelman. And he had a hustle for that one. It, because of the way the fences are, it's unlikely the ball would roll out of play. Although he had to hustle because, again, a little bit of a twisting ball goes out of play. Runners advance. Well, Esposito is not about to try to come down the line unless he's 100%. Knowing the cleanup man is up. Now, now the count's 2-0 and oh on Rupert. And I think that is the call. Don't swing till yeah. you get a strike. Here's the pitch. Wow. Line towards right. Randolph is going to take the lead. Here's the throw home. And the Rams lead. A two RBI single by John Rupert as Esposito and Artizone score and all the damage done with two away for the Rams. Hey, you roll the dice and you take your chances. And John Schmidt elected to walk Mark McClain. And I, personally, I think that was a good decision because you don't want McClain to beat you. Rupert had not had a hit and was struck out his last time up. You roll the dice, you take your shot. It's a clean single to the left. Caggiano has no choice but to take it on the first hop. 6-5 lead for the Rams. The throw home not in time to get Artizone. He'll, he will stand and cross the plate. Runners on the corners. And now we're having a discussion between the umpires. Now all is back to normal, but uh, I wonder what that was all about. Anyway, runners on the corners, two away. Rich Worst is the batter. Worst struck out, grounded out, and then had an infield single. He is one for three. Now, Eric Rothfeld on the mound must gain his composure and bear down. They're down a run, Livingston is, but they can score many runs. And they've got six outs to do Absolutely. it Absolutely. They've got the advantage of the home at-bats. But now you don't want Wirtz to come through and with a base hit and make it a two, maybe three run deficit. Now, will Randolph send the runner at first with the luxury of the lead? One and one to Wirtz. Worst pain, playing in pain. Yeah. Bottom of the first. Took a ball in the lip on the throw down to second before the inning even started. Nice block by Edelman, but now the runner will advance and Rupert will dive into the bag even though there is no throw. They weren't going to steal him, but if the opportunity presented itself as it did with the wild pitch, he would take it. And now, of course, a hit is huge. Two insurance runs are out there for Rich Worst. The count is two and one. Ooh. Might have been ball three, and Worst realizes it. Two and two. Two and two the count, two away, runners on second and third for the Rams. In this inning, they have taken a 6-5 lead in the sectional championship. Strike three, looking. But the Rams plate two, and they will head to the bottom of the sixth with a one-run lead and the sectional title on the line. We'll be right back.
That is Mike McCambly out on the mound, ready to start his second inning for the Randolph Rams in relief. And as it turns out, McCambly is now the pitcher mm -hmm. of record on the winning side as Randolph has taken a 6-5 lead as we head for the bottom part of inning number six. For the Livingston Lancers, there is warm-up action. Dave Malucci, who has been playing short, is doing some light tossing. John Schmidt told me that he would more than likely be the relief pitcher. First pitch, in for a strike. We're in the bottom of the sixth. It's Edelman, Orem, and Meyerhofer. And Bill, uh, what do we say about it? It's 8, 9, and 1. Mm -hmm. The reason we laugh is that the Livingston Big Bats, 3, 4, 5. Guaranteed to come up. Same exact situation it was in the top of the inning, 8, 9, 1. Or at the very least, 2, 3, 4 are guaranteed a trip to the plate. 8, 9 for Livingston means a 345 batter and a 350 batter. Edelman with a triple, an RBI, and a run scored in the second inning, then grounded out to the mound in the fourth. Hard hit ball, deep left field. Sallow going back. And he has time to backtrack under that one for an out. If we were playing at Seton Hall Prep today, the score would be about 83 to 82. They have a very short porch in the left. Now, I'm not familiar with the Randolph field, although they do say there is a fence in left. I don't know how many of the balls hit today would have carried into that fence or over that fence. In Livingston, where they play at Memorial Field right in front of the high school, again, no fences. It's as many as you can get. Run them out. So it's a number nine hitter, Tommy Orem. Orem had a sack fly and an RBI in the second. He played at Edelman. And then he walked in the fourth. Skies this one into the infield. Mezzacapo going back into the grass. A little bit of trouble, but he puts it away. I'll tell you, Paul, looking at these last two balls, he doesn't see any much of a wind. The field itself is tree-lined, and maybe when the balls get above the tree, the, the wind seems to be pushing it deep to left field because the balls are carrying the left. Yeah, we do not feel any breeze at all in our location, but it is certainly possible that once the ball gets up, it's being pushed around. Top of the order, 6-5 our score. Brian Meyerhofer is the batter. Lancers trail by one. They trailed early in this ballgame. They trailed 2-0. They made it 2-1. They trailed 3-1 before they tied it. They've had the lead since it was 3-3. But now they are behind after Randolph scored two in the sixth. Halper on deck. Will he bat in the sixth? Or in the seventh. Curve misses. 2-2 two, two the counts. Fly to center. Esposito is there, backing up. And he does put it away, going back. But a 1-2-3 inning for Mike McCambly. And the Lancers will be down to their final three outs. Randolph leads 6-5. We head to the seventh. Crowd has traveled here today from Livingston and Randolph here to Chatham High School to watch this Section 2 Group 4 championship game. And right now, it is Randolph with the lead. Mike McCambly will lead it off. McCambly now the pitcher of record on the winning side for Randolph. He's 0 for 2. He was also hit by a pitch. We are on the grounds of Chatham High School. Up until five years ago, this was Chatham Township High School. About a mile away from here on Main Street was Chatham Borough High School. Two schools merged about five years ago. Eskies of Chatham Borough and the Gladiators of Chatham Township. And they now, Bill, are the 
popped up in the infield. Rothfeld making the call, gets it in foul territory here on the home field of the Chatham Cougars. Ah, uh, the Cougars, Paul. <laughs> one up, one down. Joe Bobbles is the batter. Joe with two singles and then a hard line drive for an out in the fifth. And that looked like a huge play because at the time Livingston held on to the lead. But Randolph did come back to score two in the sixth. This time he goes through the middle. Rothfeld with the play. And he records the out. Excellent play by Eric Rothfeld on the mound. Ball was hard to hit right back through the middle, or as Paul would say, the originator. And watch Rothfeld get the glove down in a hurry. Stretch out, and as he falls to the ground, makes the fine catch. So left fielder Frank Sallow is the batter. Mike McCambly, the now pitcher of record on the winning side for Randolph, has left the bench area and is sitting behind home plate, deep in the shade, away from everybody but a teammate trying to cool down a little bit and maybe prepare himself mentally for pitching the bottom half of the seventh inning. Collecting his thoughts in the shade. Here. It is a, a warm day. Remember, he's been out in the field all day, first and left, then pitching. Excuse me, a third and then pitching. <laughs> Sallow takes a strike. And it could be, just wants to say where it's cool. Mm -hmm. Saves some energy. It's been a, a fairly long ball game. We're approaching the two-hour mark. Bottom of the seventh, Halper, Caggiano, Rothfeld. Two, three, and four for the Lancers. Salo backs away from the plate. Might have caught a gnat in the eye. He's ready to go. Here's the pitch from Rothfeld. Swing and a miss. So for Rothfeld, strikeout number six. Will it be enough? Well, we'll find out in just a moment as we head for the bottom half of inning number seven. Livingston needs one to continue this sectional championship game. Randolph six, Livingston five. Backs for this Livingston team. Last year, at one point in the season, they were 15 and four. They finished the season 15 and 12. Yes, they lost eight in a row to end the season, but they bounced back and are right now 22 and five, winners of six in a row. But that streak, and indeed the rest of the season, is on the line. They find themselves one run down to the Randolph Rams as we start the bottom of the seventh. Randolph with two in the first, one in the second, one in the fifth, two in the sixth. Livingston, one in the first, two in the second, two in the third, and they have not scored since. Jason Halper will start things off. Halper, 0 for 3, but with lots of speed. On his second at bat, he was thrown out by inches by the catcher, Artizone. And they are playing him tight at third base. I mean, that... You know how close the third baseman Joe Bobbles is? Similar depth to we see in softball games. He'll charge from that position. And they respect the speed of Jason Halper. The rest of the infield is back deep. Drag bunt over the pitcher's head. This is going to be trouble. No chance. Infield single for Jason Halper. Once it got over the pitcher's glove, there was very little doubt Halper was going to beat it out. That was the key. Anytime you butt on the first base side, once you get a pass to pitcher, you're almost guaranteed a base hit. With the second play, baseman playing deep as worst was. So now Halper is on for Caggiano. Caggiano reached on an error, grounded out in the fifth, but in the third inning hit a mammoth home run to left field. Lancers trail by one. 
Halper with a good lead. Off speed pitch, tipped. Artizone holds on. 14 steals on the season, but against the strong armed Artizone and with nobody out and the big men up, I don't think you'll see Halper running here. Foul ball, 0 and 2. Randolph is 0 and 2 against Livingston in 1993. Lost a 12-10 game and an 11-4 game. But right now, they have the upper hand. They've got a 6-5 lead. Randolph won the Iron Division of the Iron Hills Conference by one game over Randolph. Livingston won it. Ball. Livingston, champions of their division. They were knocked out of the GNT by West Essex, the team that is in the final. One, two, sky to right. It is playable for Rupert. Halper is going back to tag. Caught by Rupert. There goes Halper. He faked it. And a good thing he did. A little too short for Halper to try. So there's one down. This Randolph team, of course, did not win their division. They did not win their county. They lost in the quarterfinals to the eventual champions, Morristown. 5-4. Morristown the eventual winners and one of the best teams in the state. One away for Eric Rothfeld. Looks at ball one, Artizone blocked it, no advance for Halpert. Randolph has never won a sectional baseball title. Everyone, of course, very familiar with their great tradition in football and wrestling but never a sectional title in baseball. Hard hit ball towards short. Could it be two? Short to second for one. The return, not in time. So the Lancers are still alive. Worst tried to turn it, but they got the one. Very, very difficult pivot for Worst as momentum was carrying him toward the outfield. Hard hit ground ball. Mesocapo makes a nice feed to second. Get the pure runner and the very fleet Halper. See the very difficult sidearm fling by Worst back to first. David Malucci is the batter. He's had a good day. He's two for three. Pinch runner, Paul. Pinch runner in the game coming in for Rothfeld. And it's going to be Adam Newbart. Adam Newbart, a sophomore. Newbart did a little pitching this year. As a pinch runner, he has one stolen base. He checks in at first with first base coach Lee Hammer. Lee, a longtime coach in Livingston, particularly in the Legion ranks. He's watching over the young sophomore at first. Ball one. Mike McCambly on in relief. This is his third inning. He stands to be the winner if he can hold the lead. 2-0. Randolph did it with two outs in the top of the sixth. That's why they have a 6-5 lead. Hard hit ball to short. Mezzacapo up with it. Over to second. And the Randolph Rams for the first time in school history have won a sectional baseball championship as they knock off the Livingston Lancers by a final score of 6-5. And for the first time in three tries this season, they beat Livingston High School. to the Randolph Rams by the final score of 6-5 this afternoon. The winning pitcher, three innings of scoreless relief, Mike McCambly. Mike, first of all, congratulations on the uh, job in relief. When did the coach tell you that you'd be coming in to, to relief today? Um, basically, it was after the fourth inning, and uh, he told me to go warm up, and that's uh, what I'm used to doing. I like going into those, uh, those uh, tough games. I think I'm uh, set for it, and uh, 
we go through morning practices way back before the season started, and today it really paid off for us. We uh, we saw you before the seventh inning in the shade relaxing. We thought you were relaxing, but from what you told me, you're, you're feeling a little bit under the weather. Yeah, that had nothing to do with it. Uh, my coach, Coach Richards, took me over to the shade, and uh, he just gave me some words of in, uh, encouragement, and uh, basically it got me through it. Obviously the pressure was on in the bottom of the seventh inning. Their, their first hitter, very speedy runner, beats out an infield hit. You, did you have time to think of anything at that point? Hey, now the tying run is on, or did you just have to get back to your job? No, I just had to get back to my job. Uh, I should have had the, the ground ball, <laughs> but uh, I guess I was a little too nervous. Um, if you were as tall as McLean, you would have had it. Yeah. Mike, thanks very much for coming thanks by. Congratulations. Three it. scoreless innings in relief, and of course the winning pitcher today, John Rupert, step on in here. John, let's talk a little bit. Hitters, Major leagues, minor leagues, doesn't matter. When the guy is intentionally walked in front of him, you get the feeling that, hey, they don't respect me, I've got to come through. What were your thoughts when they walked McLean in front of you? Well, if I knew they were going to do it, I, just, <laughs> I had the funniest feeling. I was telling Keith on the bench that uh, I think they're going to walk him and pitch to me. I still didn't have my helmet on. I barely even warmed up. I uh, just grabbed the bat, grabbed the uh, helmet, and just stepped in the box. And I had a funny feeling all day that, I don't know, something was going to go right. I just wasn't having a good game before that. And something eventually did go right. Yeah, you had struck out in your previous at bat. I, I don't know. Had you done much in, in the first two games against Livingston? Do you, do you have any thinking about why they might have decided to go with you? Um, well, McLean's been ripping the ball yep. here, and uh, he's been ripping the ball, like I said. And there's really it's a smart play. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you know he knew I was going to get hit, still a smart play to do it. When when did the hit feel good? As soon as it got off the bat, or did you have to watch it? As soon as the uh, ball at the bat, I thought the right fielder might have grabbed it, and I was just running to first base, hoping he can get it. And, Everything just went from there. I was real excited about it. John, congratulations. I know you've got to head out of state in a few minutes, yeah. so congratulations Thanks. on a huge hit. Game-winning two RBI single for John Rupert. Coach, congratulations on the victory. Third time was the charm, but it was a battle. Let's talk about a wild first inning for both teams. They commit two errors. You double them with four. Obviously, both coaches were thinking, what's going on here? Uh, baseball's a funny game, and uh, sometimes it goes down to one pitch and uh, a lot of errors in the first two innings, but... Uh, in a big game like this, the kids are uh, tensed up and they're ready to play, and and uh, we just came out fired up. You can tell from the from first inning to the seventh inning, we wanted this game bad. Obviously, with two down in the sixth inning, things did not look all that good, but yet you were headed to the top of the order, and the man who I assume has pretty much set the table for you all season long, Dave Esposito. Uh, Dave Esposito is our, our captain, a three-year starter, just a super kid. All the players on our te team are just quality people, uh, great kids, great to work with, uh, I enjoy this job so much because I work with just a great bunch of kids. I have a great coaching staff in, in Gary Mezzacapo, Toby Richards, and Jay Walensky. We all work together. Uh, we work together as one unit, and this is the first Randolph State sectional championship ever in the school's history. Baseball's here in Randolph now. All right, Coach, thanks very much for coming okay. by. Pete Lidachevsky, congratulations, congratulations on the victory. And as he said, as we echoed, uh, first ever sectional championship for Randolph. Bill, very unusual game. It started off, in all honesty, ragged for both teams, but eventually, third inning on, it turned into two teams that belonged in the state cha in the sectional championship and proved it on the field, and it's Randolph coming away with the trophy. Yeah, we had eight errors in the game, but six of those in the first inning, and then, as Paul said, they settled in. Before we came on air, Paul and I were discussing this game, and it was the kind of game where you could analyze this one forever because there were so many ups, ups and downs and ebbs and flows and close plays that could have swung the game in either direction. And when it comes down to a one-run game, it can go either way, but today it went for Randolph. Two in the sixth on the Rupert single and three scoreless relief innings for McCambly, and that does it for the Randolph Rams. For Bill Bromberg, I'm Paul Spahala. We hope you join us for the Greater North Tournament Championship game as West Essex will take on Nutley. That's upcoming on TV3. Again, the final here in the Group 2, the Section 2 Group 4 Championship is Randolph 6, Livingston 5. Good night, everyone.